Hello everybody and welcome to episode one of my new series called Not Like It's Rocket Science. This is Cerberus and don't worry, Space's Hard Vacuum is not gone away. As I reassured you before, it's still going to happen. I'm just, I'm just going to wait until some mods work a bit better with 0.24. In the meantime, I want to play some 0.24 and so we're going to have a series in 0.24 while we wait. This one is not a real solar system series. It's not a realism overhaul series. Uh, it's kind of the stock solar system. Uh, but it is, I'd say, moderately modded. Um, I do still have uh, aerodynamics. You know, I don't use FAR for this one. I decided to try out NEAR. I think it's what's it called? The Neophytes Elementary uh, aerodynamics replacement. It's, um, it's for the most part, it's far fair aerospace research without the analysis tables and graphs and that kind of thing. Um, most of the basic fundamentals of the more realistic aerodynamics are there. So I'm using that for this series. Um, instead of real fuels, which is for use with realism overhaul, I'm using modular fuel tanks. So I still at least have the option to, you know, customize fuel tanks a little bit to some extent if I want. And then, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the mods that weren't dependent on, uh, realism overhaul, real solar system, you know, parts packs, I'm using those. They're obviously not reconfigured by all the realism and the reaching for the stars engine pack, but I'm using KW rocketry. I'm using Nova punch. Um, and of course I'll be making use of a bunch of the stock stuff because that's more versatile as well. Cause I have the tweak scale mod and I've, I've got a bunch of other stuff. I'll have a list that I'll make and you know, it'll be, I'll link to it or I'll have it in the description or something. The one other thing that I wanted to mention right this minute in terms of mods that I have is called Mission Controller Extended. And so far it doesn't, it, it seems to offer a few extra missions, but uh, mainly what it seems to do is, or the main thing I'm using it for is as a bit of a difficulty scaler. Uh, one of the things in its configuration is there's three modes, easy, medium, hard. Or hardcore, I think I might even call it. I'm on hardcore mode, and all that is really is it's just a part cost multiplier. Um, we're past it now, but while we were in the VAB, you may have caught, and if you didn't catch, I encourage you to go and rewind, you know, a minute or so, and just look at the part prices on these things in the VAB. They are six times what they are in the stock game. So that command pod, instead of costing 600, it's 3,600, for example. So, uh, instead of having, you know, Earth and the real size moon and all of that sort of realism stuff, I decided that a way to add an interesting level of challenge to the game for this series was just to have all the parts be really, really expensive. And so we're gonna, we're gonna see how that works. Um, I do, I think the rewards, the monetary rewards for your contracts do increase, but not to the same extent that the part costs do. At least I don't think so. Um, even still, um, so far, as you'll see, it's been going fairly well. Um, and yeah, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. It was just, I just sort of had the idea over the weekend and thought, well, hell, let's get the first episode out. And so... I hope you guys are enjoying and will enjoy this first episode of the of the of the kind of the while we wait series. When I get to the point when the game and the mods get to the point where I can reliably do the realism stuff uh, with the for the spaces hard vacuum series, I will continue. I might even try doing both of them at the same time. Uh, I might I might uh, move spaces hard vacuum back into the kind of Sunday Monday slot. Maybe I'll do this one for not like it's rocket science um maybe during the week because these episodes definitely take less time to make because the the building and flying of rockets is generally a lot easier we can do a few more of the fun but silly kerbal things like this sending a little sending a, a, a command pod with a solid booster strapped underneath into a suborbital trajectory to an altitude of 
just over 250 kilometers, which was luck by the way, but it allows me to get high orbit science on this first ever flight. So I have at the very least crew and EVA reports for low orbit and high orbit. First thing I launched. That's not unheard of, but I wasn't even trying for it and we got it. So that's that's cool. Now we'll plunge back into the atmosphere here and notice how I haven't said yet, yeah, this guy is dead because I'm not using deadly reentry for for this series. I decided, yeah, I, I'm not sure why I ended up not going with it, but I decided to not go with it. And um, yeah, so there we have it. We're going to see all this nice fire and visual effects, but no actual, you know, consequences. And, you know, again, that's that's more in line with this series being a little bit more true to the stock feel while having enough mods to take away what I consider to be the elements of the stock game that are just not fun. I, after having played with Fair Aerospace Research, whether it's actually the real far or this near that I'm using for this that you're watching doesn't really matter one or the other um having used those i can't stand i cannot stand the stock atmospheric dynamics anymore i actually have a really hard time putting things into orbit because i go when i build a rocket to have a nice reasonable thrust to weight ratio and do a gravity turn and all that kind of thing and then it like can't even get any speed because <laughs> The stock game's atmosphere just, like, turns into stew when you start moving through it. Terminal velocity is just stupid how it works. I hate it now, basically. I hate the stock aerodynamics. And I don't consider the game to have enough parts variety. And, I mean, what else? Um, I... I I like that some of the mod parts packs have always had kind of one step bigger size wise than you can ever get with stock parts. So squad released their 3.75 meter parts in 0.23.5 for the asteroid redirect mission. And now KW rocketry and Nova punch may already have had them, but I know KW rocketry kind of recently released five meter parts. So there's a whole, they're always kind of one step ahead in terms of how big a thing you can throw into space. I've always liked that. And, um, you know, the models are pretty, the, the variety is nice. I like having stuff to choose from. And so, yeah, so I've got the parts packs and I've got the aerodynamics. Um, and I've got the mission controller extended. So it makes the, makes the career mode a little more difficult which, again, I, I like it because I've, like I've said before in previous videos, I'm a bit of a masochist and I like KSP being harder than it already is. And for a lot of people, it's already quite a challenge, but I'm just odd like that, I suppose. So here we have it. Not like it's rocket science. The series where we mess around in the, in the stock scale solar system. And we bring a whole bunch of science back from our first flight uh, into a crazy suborbital trajectory with nothing but a solid booster and a command pod and, you know, a parachute. Which is uh, going to get us well on our way to researching the first few tech nodes. Because, again, that's another important difference between this and space's hard vacuum. It's, it's not the stock tech tree, but it's the KSP interstellar tech tree which is essentially the stock tech tree with the KSPI stuff tacked on at the end. Most of it is late technology stuff. So yes, by the way, I'm running KSP Interstellar. Um, instead of Cathane, which I normally run, because I don't believe it's compatible with 0.24.2 yet, I've, I'm trying out this new one that's sort of like it. It's uh, I believe it's community sourced. It's called Carbonite with a K. Seems very similar. Seems very, very similar. <laughs> but uh, it is different, and both can work separately. So when Cathane starts to work again with 0.24.2, I might get it too and have Cathane and Carbonite. Mm. And there you saw me just unlocking basically the first two tiers of the tech tree on one flight's worth of science. And, you know, sometimes that's 
why I prefer playing the realism stuff, because you can't really just launch straight up and grab all the science out of the, well, out of the space and the air and do that. It, it doesn't work that way in space's hard vacuum. But at the same time, there is a definitely a part of me that likes having this vacation from all of the stressful realism stuff. Uh, because it, it does get... It, 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 is, it is properly hard, and it is a real challenge to crank out even the 20-minute episodes that I'm doing in Space's Hard Vacuum. So anyway, with the bounty of science that we brought back, and we unlocked a whole bunch of this new tech, so... Now we are uh, on our second ever flight in this new career mode. And this one, I believe, the objective was to get the last contract that I hadn't gotten at the start, which is to achieve orbit. A note on those contracts, by the way. Uh, for my first flight, I went in and I picked up all four of those contracts that you start with to launch, to reach 5,000 meters, to escape the atmosphere, and to orbit Kerbin. I knew my first rocket with a solid booster wasn't going to orbit Kerbin, but, and I would advise anybody playing you know, 0.24 these days, to go into the uh, mission control, I should say, not the science center, mission control after every flight, or before every flight, and look through all the contracts and pick up the ones that interest you. Just pick them up now, because most of them have a deadline of three or four months in the future. So as long as you remember them and don't go on an interplanetary flight to ELU, or something, you know, it'll be fine. Because they tend to, ex some of them expire quickly if you don't pick them up. And also, with those initial four, and many of the other ones like it, to set records or to reach this place or to explore the moon, if you do them without having picked up the contract, the option to pick up the contract is lost. I think forever. So had I not picked up, launch a vessel, reach 5,000 meters, and escape the atmosphere, before doing my first flight, I would have launched a vessel, obviously. I would have reached 5,000 meters, and as it turned out, I escaped the atmosphere by a huge margin. I wouldn't have gotten the contract rewards because I hadn't picked up the contracts, and I would I would have lost the chance to do them forever. And that kind of would have sucked, because I wouldn't have gotten some of that science that I used to do this on the second flight. And so it's just, that's my advice to anybody, is even if you're not going to do the contract now, pick it up anyway. Have it active. Some of them you might even do accidentally. You might forget about it, put the correct part on your rocket, and stage it at the correct time, and hey, there you go, free money. So it's always good to have in your list anything you plan on doing. You can always cancel them later. You just pay back the advance money that they gave you. Not usually a big deal. Another note on contracts is that I tend to not um, pick up the ones for, you know, a hundred bucks to test something landed at Kerbin. I mean, it's all fine and well and good if you're playing bone stock and you want to make a hundred bucks. Fine, sure, you know, go nuts. All of my parts cost six times what they normally would, and any of those contracts do not pay for the cost of building the rocket. So that's, yeah, that's, I'm definitely not doing them. And speaking of testing parts, that's a contract done for testing that Nova Punch K2X engine, which, by the way, is extremely overpowered for what I have it doing right there. Uh, just as an upper stage for that tiny little tank. It makes something like 195 kilonewtons of thrust. I could have used it to launch the rocket off the ground. But the contract system, I had to, uh, I had to test it on a suborbital trajectory at a certain altitude. So I used it to complete my orbit. I was going in orbit anyway. Might as well use this rocket, kill two birds with one stone. Speaking of killing birds with stones, now... What ensues here that you're watching is, since I'm in orbit anyway, even though I didn't bring any science instruments with me, I can still do EVA reports. Because as you hopefully remember, if you don't, if you didn't know, then news for you. Uh, low space, like low orbit science, 
accounts for each biome over bodies like Kerbin and the Moon and Minmus. So you can orbit. And when you think you're flying, it's easier with Kerbin. When you think you're flying over a biome, like when you're flying over green for grassland, or brown for highland, or white for mountains, or blue for ocean, or sand for desert, you get your Kerbal out and do an EVA report, and you will get the science again and again and again for each biome. So that's what I did on this flight, which took a hell of a lot longer than what I showed you. I orbited a few times and tried to hit every biome I could with the fuel I had. I think I managed to get six of them. I don't quite recall. I didn't get the poles, of course. That'll be a, I'll do a polar orbit some other time. But I got grasslands, shores, highlands, mountains, ocean, and desert. So there's those six, and that's... I think they're eight science apiece, and that's nothing to sneeze at at this early stage, as you're going to see. I mean, look at the science that we pulled there. So now, after we get through looking at this, perusing our bounty of science, and then we'll peruse our bounty of recovered parts, which isn't a hell of a lot. I mean, we didn't bring all of very many of our parts back with us, but we landed decently close to the KSC, so we got a pretty good percentage of those parts value back, which is always nice. And that is another dynamic that mission controller extended in hardcore difficulty mode really does bring to the table is that it really does pay to land your stuff to recover as much as you can and land your stuff as close to the space center as you can because it's worth a lot of money and so here i'm looking at the science that i've got and i just picking two of them i think is what i had enough for and so I went for flight control, so just so I could get uh, I could get Mac Jeb, because I like Mac Jeb. <laughs> Even in the stock scale solar system, I like to have it. Uh, it just makes it quicker. I mean, it 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 takes time to sit there and do your home and transfer maneuver to the moon. And I know how to do it. I've done it a lot of times, and I've explained this in past videos before as well. It takes a lot of the repetition out of stuff that you do all the time. Uh, I don't use it to take off, as you see. I mean, I, I do my hands-off gravity turn approach, same as I do in Space's Hard Vacuum. And, um, you know, it, it it still works great. I have to modify it a little bit, because, you know, you're dealing with a smaller orbit, but you can still do the natural gravity turn. And I really enjoy it. It's Once you get the hang of it, which is hard, getting the hang of it is hard. Once you have the hang of it, doing it is easy. I mean, it's it's almost eyes closed easy. So then anyway, after another successful flight, I check for contracts because now that I've been in orbit, the next big one that you saw there was explore the moon. So that's going to be the next big milestone. And then obviously it follows logically once we do that, the big milestone will be to explore Duna or maybe Eve. And so it, it kind of works that way. And then along the way, you get all these contract offers to test parts in certain places in orbit in flight eventually we'll start seeing them where it's test a part landed on the moon and that kind of thing so you have to get a part all the way out somewhere you know far and then run a test on it so there might be a little bit of that but of course it remains to be seen what the game throws at me this is my first time through career mode and I hope you guys will enjoy, at the very least, watching and following along as I do that with uh, super hard, super expensive parts. <laughs> and uh, in any case, this series will definitely be on next week. And so I will see all you guys then. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.